and welcome to Back to the Feature, uh, your film review show on DCTV, where we have a laugh and a chat about the latest cinema releases. On the show today, we'll be reviewing Quentin Tarantino's latest Django Unchained. We'll also be taking a look at Gangster Squad, starring Josh Brolin, Sean Penn and Ryan Gosling. Plus, we'll have the film archive. So sit back, relax and let us take you back to the feature. <laughs> Kill people. Can I give you a reward? Better they are, bigger the reward. I'm looking for the Brittle Brothers. I know what they look like, all right. They sold my wife, but I don't know to who. You help me do that. There ain't no break. I'll give you your freedom and take you to rescue your wife. First up this week is the new Quentin Tarantino film Django Unchained, uh, set two years before the Civil War. Uh, it stars Jamie Foxx as Django, who teams up with bounty hunter Christopher Waltz to track down his wife, Broomhilda. Eric, uh, Django, what did you think? He was unchanged. Eh? <laughs> he was. <laughs> now, uh, Tarantino likes to muck around with uh, the timeline in his films, uh, as in Pulp Fiction. Uh, Reservoir Dogs, you know Jackie Brown, but um, uh, in this uh, Django and Chains, uh, it's much more straightforward. Plot is, in fact, it's it is straightforward. It's from beginning to end, and that's it. You know, there's the odd flashback now and again to Django's past. It is more just a con like a conventional revenge western, and we've seen hundreds of those. It is his most straightforward film, without a shadow of a doubt, plot wise, and and it doesn't uh, suffer for it. I don't think, from, not from my opinion. Uh, no, I, I, I loved it. Time. It's kind of body comedy. Going from a feminist kind of point of view, all the women do in it is go, ah, which is a bit, you know, of a letdown to our gender. But the That's men, what they used to the do in those days. <laughs> That's all they could do. <laughs> That's all we used to do back then was scream. Yeah, you had to scream and faint. Yeah. <laughs> you scared me. Why is I'm scared? There are a lot of scenes maybe that, that there's a lot said and they don't advance the yeah. storyline along a huge way. Yeah, it's quite stagnant. Yeah. Some yeah. scenes, they do. They do kind of drag and they're not necessary to the plot. I think they're just there for, yeah, for fun almost. Tarantino loves his dialogue, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, you know, he could make a dialogue out of an ashtray. So, <laughs> you know, he, well, he could though, couldn't he? Could put, and, you know, and he'd probably be glued to it while he does it as well. Don't get so carried away with your retribution. You lose sight of why we're here. You think I lost sight of that? Yes, I do. Stop antagonizing Candy. I'm not antagonizing. I'm intriguing him. I thought the last 20 minutes now uh, could have been doing with a bit of chopping. You yeah. know what I mean? I thought the film could have ended earlier there because there, there was a lot of stuff happening that really yeah, it wasn't didn't, it didn't uh, bring anything to the story no. as such. So Classic Western, you can't, you, you have to tie up the loose ends, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wouldn't have been much of a revenge film if had there been... Uh, no revenge. <laughs> 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 Who's that stumbling around in the dark? State your business or prepare to get winged. It was populated by really, really good characters, I thought. Leonardo DiCaprio as, uh, as Candy, Samuel L. Jackson, a great kind of appearance towards the end, and Christopher mm. Waltz and Fox, very good in it. Yeah, um, I think out of them all, Jamie Fox had the least to do, hadn't he? I heard you've been telling everybody that Mandingos ain't no damn good, ain't nothing nobody is selling is worth buying. I'm curious. What makes you such a Mandingo expert? I'm curious what makes you so curious. Even though he's a protagonist, I couldn't really like him. I even liked um, DiCaprio more as Candy. <laughs> Honestly, he just, just had that thing about him. He was, he was very, I don't know, he just did it really, really well. And there's some, just something about Django that I just didn't, I don't know, I couldn't warm to him. Might be Jamie Foxx, is it? Rather than Django. I, 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 mean, I have to say, Tom, Tom, I don't rate well, Jamie Foxx particularly high yeah, as an actor. Yeah, that's mm. what I was about to say to us. Like Clint Eastwood didn't say a lot in his westerns, but he always liked him. Mm. You know that way? Well, yeah. I did. Good cold evening, gentlemen. I'm Dr. King Schultz. What kind of doctor? 
dentist. It's very hard not to just pay all your attention to Chris of Waltz yeah. mm. because like every line that he's given, he delivers with such kind of yeah. aplomb yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. And every scene, as we said, he's in, he completely steals the show. You said you ain't know him. I don't. Yes, you do. Everyone's fed up with Samuel L. Jackson at this stage. I, yeah, Girl. maybe it was just character, but I found him very unlikable. Yeah, yeah, film. yeah. But I mean, his, his performance and it was brilliant. I mean, mm. it, it obviously worked well because yeah. you didn't like him. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. I mean, I didn't like his character. I mean, I normally just don't like him because I'm fed up at this stage with with that it's Samuel Samuel Jackson, with Samuel L. Jackson, Jackson yeah. playing Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, in the yeah. You know, giving yeah. his usual speeches all the Snakes way. Snakes on the know. plane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> since Pulp Fiction, he's been giving a speech in every mm. film. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah, I thought yeah. in this one now, much better performance. Yeah. You do not have anything to drink. Can I get you a tasty refreshment? Yes, I'll have a beer. Wonder bar. Roscoe, a beer for the man with the beard, and I will have a Polynesian pearl diver. Do not spare the rum. DiCaprio, we said, he's really matured as an actor in the last five, six, seven years. Yeah. He's, he's become, he's really, I think he's the, the best there is in Hollywood at yeah, the moment. Yeah, I think, I think from um, the Aviator onwards, basically, yeah. uh, I think Once DiCaprio I, started he really He went away for a while, he came wings. back, and he, when he returned, he really yeah, he reinvented himself, form. didn't he? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He wasn't just like this pin up anymore, like on teenage girls' walls or anything yeah. like that. I like the way you die, boy. Originally, from the word go, it was a western. The big titles, you know, the the, the title sequence. Yeah, like, it was really, and the really... song, and a lot of these kind of like shaky zooms right up into the face it was quite a nice characteristic to throw in there as yeah, well. Very the gay western, wasn't it? Yeah, yes. and the kind of whipping sound as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you could see that, that he was really there. dope. From the word go, Eric, he looked like he was really enjoying himself with this. Yeah, it was gorgeous. I mean, it looks fantastic. You know, the, the old film stuff, doesn't it? Uh, we, Sorry, sorry, I'm just readjusting myself here. Go. <laughs> there we go. I love westerns. <laughs> Two cowboys just moshing around. Turn into broke back now. now I should Chewing leave. the fat. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um. <laughs> yeah, it was go dope. on, Eric. It was nice. <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, when I was, was going to compare it to The Hobbit there a few weeks back, the difference with film and. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that 48 per frames per second. Which we digital. didn't enjoy. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I mean, took the whole filmic yeah. look off of where this looked it's epic. Gorgeous. It looked yeah, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, and all the film burns in it and the, the film noise and, and you know, all the grain and everything on the screen looks gorgeous. The whole lot. It's just beautiful looking. Uh, all the, the colours real vibrant, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely gorgeous looking. But it was quite quite violent, Tara. What did you think? Was it over the top? It was, yeah, it was kind of to the point where it was getting a little bit laughable, I found. There was one particular shootout scene towards the end, and I just was kind of sitting there going, oh yeah, it's another person dead. Okay, <laughs> body count's getting high. You see the first shotgun blast in the mm. film, and it yeah, yeah, just it's, 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 it's a, a splash. Of blood. Yeah, 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 everyone yeah. just explodes. They yeah, don't yeah, just yeah. die; they explode yeah, as yeah, they yeah. die. As a Western fan, as a Tarantino fan, I think they're they're kind of a match <laughs> made in heaven, yeah. and, and it, it just worked really, really well. And I was like thoroughly entertained all the way through. Absolutely. Um, I think it's a film for fanboys like yourselves. <laughs> really, <laughs> maybe not so much the people who wouldn't be as into. Quentin, Tarantino, or Westerns. Gives your marks out of 10 for Right, for marks Django. out of 10 for, for Django. This is hard now, you know what I mean? Because I know it is flawed, and but I also think it's brilliant, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to give it 10 out of 10. I'll give it um, 8. Did the trick as a film, I suppose. Um, Were you entertained? Yeah, I was entertained, but um, I wouldn't rush out and buy it on DVD like the second it comes out or anything like that. I probably would happily go through the rest of my life without seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> so your marks out of 10, Tara? Um, I'll give it a nice round 6, I suppose. I'm going to give it 8 out of 10 as well. For me, from the minute the credits rolled at the start, these big titles, the big landscape that we see them yeah. in, and then the Ennio Morricone score, it's like, yeah. I'm sold here. We're in heaven. <laughs> and then <laughs> when we see Waltz's first scene, I think it really got me into it straight away, and I wanted to like it, and then I, I did, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought I was totally entertained. When I came out here, LA was nothing. Back east, I was a gangster. Out of here, I'm gonna. Los Angeles is a damsel in distress, and I need you to save her. Our second film this week is Gangster Squad. It's set in late 40s uh, LA and it stars Sean Penn as Mickey Cohn, the gangster who's about to consolidate his power on the East Coast. Uh, Eric, the plot of Gangster Squad? Um. <laughs> what, what there was um. of it? <laughs> well, you just 
That's Some it. Someone up. <laughs> it has to be stopped. It, some, it has to be stopped. Someone stop him. And so who's going to stop him? The squad. There we go. <laughs> I can't remember the former say. What was the squad called? The Gangster, the gangster squad. squad. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Tara, what did you take of the plot of this? I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> From beginning to end. <laughs> no, it was really, really... It's interesting to see that kind of era um, today. You know, there's just something about it. Like, even though there's people dying left, right and centre, and, you know, you couldn't walk down the street for fear of someone shooting you in the head. Um, there's... There's a certain romanticism, I think, about it. And I, just, <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. I really did. I mean, the plot is fairly <coughs> straightforward, but that's kind of what you want. You know, you want your good cop, you know, and yeah, it not was very playing by the rules and, and all that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a stock plot now, I yeah. would have to say. Like, I mean, there's a, a gangster on the loose. Who can stop him? Only, uh, like, only, only these cops who are going outside yeah, the law yeah, yeah. to mm. stop him. You know what I mean? I mean We've seen it in... It's been done probably dozens of times at this stage, but at the same time, it, it does, it, it it flows nicely, and it, you know, you you're not taxed yeah, 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 at yeah, any stage. At, it's kind of like Untouchables light, isn't it? It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, the Untouchables was quite light, but I mean, it's this is even lighter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is even lighter. I'll be, you know, it had a few nasty little moments in it, I suppose. Didn't yeah, it? yeah, it was the, the opening scene. I guess is quite, it, it, it's, it's very, very violent. Yeah. And you think maybe the the plot is going to develop a little mm. bit darker than it subsequently does. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is he? It's in the air! Come on! I don't think so. Ten bucks says this guy ain't even healed. I'll take that bet. Yeah. You know, just come over here and find out. Come on. Bang. So we said that the plot, uh, very black and white, but the characters, very black and white. Square jawed <laughs> cops, weasley looking baddies. Oh, I thought they were really, really likable. I really did. Um, yeah, I really was rooting for the good guys throughout the whole thing, and I really, really wanted them to kick the crap out <laughs> of That's Nick okay. Cohen. <laughs> Had to censor myself. Uh, yeah, there, I mean, again, there's this kind of sense of like women were kind of like, oh, you know, whatever. You you stay in the kitchen there, ladies. But well, not necessarily. No. no. Yep. Well, the, strong the wife. Wouldn't. The wife. It wasn't for the wife. Yeah. Problem wouldn't be doing anything. Yeah, he wouldn't even have a squad. He That's would have picked true. an awful mm. squad. <laughs> His wife was actually quite a strong character. Yeah, yeah. yeah Breaking plates there. in the house and everything she was. Remember? Oh, she was, yeah. yeah. Go mad, she was. Tough. <laughs> but <laughs> as I said, well, I was thinking about this, but I, when I said that, I couldn't remember any of the characters' names except You're for Mickey so Cohen. You're so caught up in the plot. <laughs> <laughs> the guns were so loud, we, we couldn't we hear the bloody this, names. We had this kind but, of scene where the squad was assembled and we had like the family man, we had the sharpshooter, yeah. we had the Mexican mm. lad. Yeah, <laughs> the token foreign guy. I love America! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but we, we yeah, so we, the squad was assembled, but we never really got introduced to them. I suppose Ryan Gosling's character, mm. uh, what was his name? I don't know, Josh Brolin, he was the Sarge. Did he yeah. have another name? When we succeed, nobody will ever know what we've done. No medals, no promotion. But I'm here to tell you there's death in it, waiting for the man who hesitates. Right now, our only advantage is that he won't know who we are. So I have only one rule in this outfit. Leave these at home. We're not solving a case here. We're going to war. The opening shot of Josh Brolin in that is fantastic when he just kind of turns around and he has his hat on and he's real slick looking and you know this isn't a guy to be messed with. Yeah. Well, he, in all right. fairness, they are, the characters are yeah. very cool. Yes. Yeah. You know yeah, that's and it, exactly. and it, does, it looks lovely. Mm. And the, that's the but they're so black and white. Like, yeah, there's no, they, 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 at they one do. stage I was wondering maybe which one of these guys is going to betray them to the mob. Yeah, no, yeah. they're so straight. You know what I mean? It, does, the, yeah. What's, uh, it, the, it just doesn't happen. Like, and you don't really get much development with them. Like you have the family guy and he remains the family guy. He, you think maybe even him, could he be corrupted to mm. save his kids yeah, or something? Well, as a light, they weren't looking as at that. a light <laughs> film, I mean, yeah. how much more do you want? Sean Penn hammed her up the bits, didn't he? Yeah. He enjoyed himself anyway. I thought even his face transformed with evil. I think yeah, I think he had uh, prosthetics on him, didn't he? Oh, his really? eyes, I think, yeah, they yeah, made his, it's very his like, eyebrows look heavier yeah, over yeah, his yeah, eyes, yeah. I think. God, this is not for sales like a dog with rabies. There's no medicine for it. You just got to put him down. Nick Nolte was wasted. He didn't have a lot to do. Mean? He was square I mean, jawed. Nick Nolte got a ton of one. And then that was it. <laughs> right, Nick, Nick, off Nick, to the side there, you know. Nick came in here in rage for a couple of seconds. Back in with Sean Penn, Sean Diggs. Because he threw a lot of digs in that film, didn't he? Sean Penn. Yeah, even when no one was standing there, he'd be like, that, <laughs> still punching the air. <laughs> Every kingdom comes up bloody. 
But anyway, so the, I thought that these characters are even light, but but entertaining at the same time. Yeah, point. exactly. Some good set pieces. The action was well paced. You know, the good car chase as well. Yeah, it, lo it looks really nice. The, the, it was uh, it was really well lit, wasn't it? Yeah. The lighting was lovely, you know. Yeah. Well, and the period yeah. feel was. You can't help thinking well. it would have looked even nicer in, in black and white. I think anyway, I love black and white. Yeah, yeah. Would have looked lovely. But yeah, but then with that, he wouldn't have Emma Stone's red hair and her red lips and all really kind of emphasizing. Yeah. Um, the, the, yeah. The, yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, the the editing was standard, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, High praise <laughs> indeed. <Aaron. laughs> well, it was. It was one spectacular about it. You know. Uh, the, the, it had the, a nice the, look to it. Yeah, yeah, well costumed nice. yeah. as well. That's what I was going to say. The costumes, the <laughs> yeah, hair, yeah, all yeah, the yeah. of the set. It was just slick. Like. Can I take me away from all this? No, ma'am. I was just hoping to take you to bed. It just makes me want to live in that time, even if I had to like be afraid every time I walked out the front door. I just think it's just, just glamorous. It's just a much cooler time, much cooler people. And men were men. Yeah, there's, um. nothing, like, there's nothing like a woman standing there with a smoke and you just coming over and going, Shh. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, young lady. <laughs> well, maybe not so lecherous. Maybe not. Hello, no, young lady. Put, turn down the voice a bit. You can't help himself. <laughs> yeah, that's just my voice. <laughs> Doesn't seem right that he should have so much while others have so little. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Oh. I know, I had to be <laughs> awkward. I just thought it was beautiful. I really did. I would gladly sit there and watch it again and again. Yeah, I'm going to give it a 5 because there was nothing new, not groundbreaking, you know. Tara laughed it up apparently, but I mean, I just, it didn't, you know, I, you know, I was happy when it was me. over, I was happy yeah. enough when it was over, so, yeah, yeah five out. So for me, I give it a six or six and a half. I mean, it was entertaining stuff. I thought, you know, if it's one of these films where you kind of go in and you want to just sit down and let a film kind of wash over you mm. and enjoy it, then it's perfect, really. Like, do you know what I mean? It has mm. a good bit of action. You know, people look nice in it. it it's a, it's a, it's a straightforward story. So you've nothing to be challenged with. I know. Yeah. So maybe just kind of sit Sunday there. Sunday afternoon in front of the Sunday television. Sunday afternoon in front of the television with a few people. It's yeah. perfect. So mm. I give it a say six and a half. It was enjoyable without being taxing in any way, shape, or form. Our film from the Film Archive this week is 1960s Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock's uh, psychological masterpiece. Uh, Eric, a classic, and i only seen this this week for the first time. Yeah, you oddball. <laughs> <laughs> You're a psycho. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, brilliant. What can you say about it? It's just brilliant, Tara. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> jumping on me. Yeah, well, it's a quintessential horror, really. I mean, a lot of people are still trying to live up to it today. The fact that it's 52 years old and still going strong says a lot. I mean, even young people who might necessarily know exactly what it is would know that <laughs> thing, you know, so the whole shower scene and all that kind of malarkey. So, yeah, it's kind of transcended different generations. And the plot, it's reasonably straightforward, is it? Yeah. Yes and no. I don't know. I mean, at first glance, yes, but then you kind of realise that maybe there's something a little bit more going on than you would first think with Norman Bates and his mother. Um, I don't know if you want to read into it or not, it's up to you. But, it, you know, it, I guess at this stage we're probably safe to, to, to put in a few spoilers. Yeah. But there's, a few, there's a few theories, you know. You can like, come to your own conclusion, but there's a few, it might necessarily be as a straightforward thing. I guess for, thing. for the time, the plot was a big deal because there was well, a big yeah. rigmarole. Nobody got in late to the cinema. You know, no, there was signs up saying, don't tell anybody what happens mm. because the twist at the time, we've seen it done since then and that's probably, we're familiar with it, but at the time, it was it was revolutionary. Well, yeah, I, 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 I don't think there was uh, another film out before that where a man had dressed up as a, yeah. a, 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 a woman or his mother or whatever, <laughs> to be more precise, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, like uh, this transvestism and trans. What did I say? Transvestism. There? That's the right word. Is it? Yeah, I believe so. There you go. Yeah, I'm done. correcting myself. <laughs> so clever. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, like, uh, like the plot was, you know, as we all know, it was loosely based on Ed Gein, uh, serial killer. Was he a serial killer? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it was. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was. It was a real life. Uh, killing that yeah, happened. Yeah, I don't yeah, know if, yeah. it was, if he, he was serial or not. And yeah, took yeah, her yeah. back to his house and lived with her. Do you know that? Did you? 
Two and a half. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's what Anthony Fair can say. <laughs> Character was based on this mm. was based on. But uh, and yeah, so it was for, the, for its time. It was like the plot like and what have you was extremely controversial. And even little things like obviously that the, the, the opening scene of the film we see the, the the couple meeting and they're not married couple. This was controversial as well. It was a film that mm. was very. There was lots of things in it that were quite this shocking was, yeah, yeah. to audiences at the time. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The fact that uh, Janet Lee and John Gavin was it John Gavin. Wasn't it oh, was John Gavin, uh, the actor, uh, had met each other, you know, at the lunch hour at the beginning yeah. of the film and all that. That was it. Uh, uh, no, yeah. no. And he was Back a then. divorce. Yeah, they weren't married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was. And then his there, divorce hadn't even gone through. And obviously, and it's that. quite voy- voyeuristic. I mean, you see her in her bra and stuff at yeah, the start, yeah. and that would have been like in the middle of the day. You know, that well, was this, controversial. This yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, as I learned there the other day, uh, the showing of the toilet pot in um, in the motel. Room was it's a, a no-no as well. Yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, yeah, yeah. That there was murder over the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he had murder with the censors over showing the toilet pot. Yeah. Wow. Well, there you go. And it, like you, you've, you've been reading into Hitchcock a little bit. One of yes. his classic things of this kind of punishment of of yes. the female protagonist. Yes. If in any way a female is active, she will be punished in his films. <laughs> I mean, you have Janet Lee stealing money, going off with a divorced almost man, and then she gets killed. In the first 25 minutes or so. Yeah, well, so. this is, I think, was, was as far as plot points go, it's shocking because it happens a third of the way into the film where mm. you lose the main female yeah. character. Yeah, yeah. And Janet Lee was a big star at the time yeah, and she was worked. Yeah. And I have to say, not, I, I knew obviously that, that about the shower scene and all because you're familiar with it, even if you're everybody, I think, is familiar with this film, even if they haven't seen it, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is an amazing kind yeah, of yeah, achievement. No, yeah, yeah. But so I kind of knew that the shower scene was coming, but I was still surprised when it happened because we'd just kind of been introduced to the Norman Bates character in, in that and they have this long kind of discussion and they kind of almost build this relationship yeah. and then the next thing yeah. she can't and that, that fantastic music from we have the yeah Jeremy and we have Herman, this the, yeah. you know the, the reason why people have been kind of eyeballing their shower every time they get in for 50 years <laughs> <laughs> the whole idea is that it's uh, from what I've read is that you're supposed to then identify with Norman Bates so it makes you uncomfortable that you're yeah. kind of you can have something in common with this psychopath and it kind of shows you your own moral ambiguity and makes you question yourself. <clears throat> and that's what there was a scene that really emphasised that for me and I was telling Eric about it during the week is when he ki- she's been killed, he wraps up the body, puts her in the boot of the car and pushes the car into the swamp and for a moment the car pauses Mm. and doesn't sink all the way down yeah. and you're like, sink! Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. we'll get away with it sort of, yeah, you know? Well, it's, it's basically what uh, Anthony Perkins brought to, brought to the character anyway, wasn't it? That he was so likeable, he was shy, mm. he was bashful. Yeah. And, he was know, boyish, you know, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was kind of charming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Brilliant. I have to say, I, I was uh, I've said this as well, but uh, watching that, that was probably my favourite uh, act, bit of acting that I've seen in a film for a long time. I know it's an old film, but not having seen it before, I thought he was perfect. Yeah, you know what I mean? He good. did that have that, you know, you'd never really believed that, that he was capable of what was happening yeah until the and then you see him at the end and he, he's completely demented yeah. he's a psycho yeah yeah <laughs> but anyway so it's it's a pretty much a perfect piece of filmmaking is that and then we, yeah, love we the, it. The, sh, the, the the photography in it the use of angles and Light, black and yeah. white and lighting it's oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah lovely it's stunning film. and the, the music again and the editing brilliant mm. yeah. so tara summing up uh, it's a classic, you know. You can't, you can't not watch it. I'd say it's one of those films you have to see before you die, definitely. Yeah. Put it on your list. Yeah. And Eric. Yeah, brilliant. Hugely inspirational film. Uh, like Tara says, still does to this day. Uh, you wouldn't have the likes of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre without it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and for, for me, I have <laughs> to I say, that was brilliant. Uh, but just, just uh, absolutely brilliant. Hitchcock had it top of his power and uh, talent as well. Just absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and and I have to say, I I. It was familiar with a lot of what happened in it, but watching it kind of for the first time ever, it really blew me. I really enjoyed it, like, and, and, and it is suspenseful and great performances. Mm. And I says I loved the way it looked, and it was mm. just—it's perfect, really, isn't it? It's yeah. still famous perfect, and it's still popular for a reason. Yeah, like. this is it. Yeah.